At number 10, we have Salem, Massachusetts, USA, a town revered by the occult and has a dark enough history to make any horror fan squeal with glee. Salem, Massachusetts was the home of the 1692 Salem Witch Trials. This is where a massive witch hunt led to the hanging of 19 people who were falsely accused of using witchcraft. There are several spots around the town that give off an extremely creepy vibe and have reported hauntings, but the most notorious place is the former home of Sheriff George Corwin. He was the man responsible for spearheading the hunting and capturing of these witches. Not only that, but the people that were captured, he would take them into his basement and then he would torture these people until they confessed to their crimes. Now his ghost and the ghosts of several other people who were tortured by him haunt the Joshua Ward House, which is the building that sits on the land that the sheriff's house used to be on. At number 9 we have the Fairmont Hotel in Banff, Canada. If you have never been to Banff, it is one of the most beautiful places in the whole world. There's amazing skiing in the winter and in the summer it turns into a lush green wonderland. If you were a ghost, this would be a paradise to haunt. The Fairmont sits on top of a mountain that looks so regal, it could double as the Grand Budapest Hotel. It was built in 1888, and it was the center point to increase tourism in the area, and it worked. But like any old building, this place has adopted some guests that refuse to check out. There are two ghosts that are responsible for the majority of the ghost sightings, one being that of an old bellhop. He was the employee of the hotel back in the 70s, and after he kicked the bucket, he decided that retirement wasn't for him. His ghost has been seen throughout the hotel helping people to this day. Very few people get to do what they love. Why let a little thing like death stop you from sticking to your passion? Another ghost is that of the bride dressed all in white. The story goes that she tripped down a staircase on the day of her wedding and met a grim ending. That is a huge bummer. You're about to make it to the altar and you lose your footing. Oh, That sucks. At number 8 we have the Chinoy Church in Beijing, China. An old mysterious building that sits in Beijing, China. There are are several elements to this building that make it an intriguing place for anyone interested in the supernatural. First, no one knows who built the building or who commissioned the building to be built, almost as if an outside force created the building, like the devil came to town and was like, yeah, let's build a church. Also on the front door of the building, there is a note that makes it very clear that there are no ghosts inside, which is super sus. Like where I live, there's no note about ghosts because it's just a given. We know there's no ghosts. This place uses the use used car salesman approach to convincing people. Yeah, that rickety noise in the back? Oh, that's just something the car makes. It's an added feature. The residence is haunted by the ghost of a young woman who killed herself by hanging during the communist war in China. Some say she did this because her husband was killed at war, and others say she was trying to avoid capture. At number 7 we have the Shanghai Tunnels in Portland, USA. A Shanghai Tunnel sounds like a place where you go to bet on horse racing and eat the best fried rice you've ever had in your life. But it actually used to be the epicenter for human trafficking in the United States. Located in Portland, Oregon, the tunnels are now run down and unused. Back in the 19th century, people walking through these tunnels would often be kidnapped and then sold overseas into slave labor. Some bars above these tunnels had trap doors in them, which they would use to take drunk people, slip them down to the tunnels where they would never be seen again. A lot of people died in these tunnels before they were sold off into slavery. Now it's said that their angry ghosts walk the halls. Screaming, banging, and even weeping can be heard when you pass through these tunnels. At number 6 we have La Chateau de Brizac. France. We are heading all over the world with this list and now we're heading to a place that has a long rich history, France. It makes sense to waltz right into a castle. Besides being one of the most glorious buildings in all of France, an exciting reason to visit this place is the spectral tourist attraction. Back during the reign of King Charles VII, he was married to a beautiful woman who he unfortunately found out was cheating on him. He wasn't too happy with this so he divorced her and that was that. I'm just kidding. It was the 1400s. He also had her killed for insulting his honor. That's how they did things back then. When her life ended, she was wearing a green dress. Now it said you can see the ghost of a woman in a green dress walking the halls, moaning for her lost love. At number 5 we have Morgan House, Kalimpong, India. The estate formerly owned by the Morgans has a rather dark past. 
past. The house was lived in by Baron George Morgan and his wife back in the 1930s. Apparently Mr. Morgan would spend a lot of his free time torturing his wife. With them being in India and his wife having nowhere to go, she eventually fell into a depression. Not long after that she died. The two never had any kids and after Mr. Morgan died, the Indian government took control of the property. It has now been spruced up into a nice hotel, but the terrors of this buildings past haven't been washed away. Mrs. Morgan is free from her husband and has no interest in leaving her home. Many patrons of the hotel say they have heard her high heels walking along the wooden floors. At number 4 we have Casa Loma, Toronto, Canada. The most famously haunted place in all of Toronto. It's literally a massive castle that is a 10 minute drive from the world famous CN Tower. It's strange having a massive stone castle built in the early 20th century so close to the downtown core, but that's probably why it's so haunted. All the ghosts want to gather there because it feels like home. One of the most haunted areas of the castle are the secret underground tunnels which connect different sections of the property. There have been reports of a ghostly miner who might have died digging the tunnels and a lady in a white dress. Also the castle's former owner Lady Mary Pellet has been seen all throughout the building. Some people say they've tried to take a picture of her when she's walking through and she will use her ghostly powers to turn off your camera. Sounds like she's not very photogenic. If you want to give yourself an extra fright you should come check out the castle in October when they turn the whole thing into a massive haunted house. I've been it's a great time. At number 3 we have the Hill of Crosses in Lithuania. The look of this place will make you say, oh yeah, there are for sure some ghosts in here. This hill has been the site of rebellion, respect and remembering the dead for the past 500 years. People have come here to place crosses as a way to pay good fortune to those who died fighting for the freedom of Lithuania. This practice has made it a safe haven for spirits to walk through and there have been reports of seances performed there trying to contact these dead heroes. There are currently over a hundred thousand crosses piled up on this hill. Back in the Soviet reign they tried to destroy this holy landmark three times. Three. That's three. Three times. But the Lithuanian people stood strong and came back to rebuild it every time. That's a pretty awesome story of solidarity. I know why ghosts want to hang out here. They're like I know my home will be safe forever. At number 2 we have cemetery number 1 in New Orleans USA. This place has been nicknamed the haunted city because it is literally filled with so many graves that you could fill a small theater. There are over 700 graves at this site. You pack that many people into one spot and you are guaranteed some strange spirits walking around. On Halloween it must be like a mad massive party in there. It would be a giant ghost rave with the coolest people from the last 200 years. The grave that gets the most attention is that of former voodoo priestess Marie Laveau. It said she had the power to influence spirits and now even in death her ghost can gain strength from the graveyard and get the phantoms to do her bidding. I mean that's a good skill to have after you're dead. You're like all oh, you guys you work for me. That's how this is gonna work. And for the number one spot we have the Rose Hall in Montego Bay, Jamaica. A beautiful mansion that used to be the home of the Palmers back in the 19th century. The two were a loving couple or that's what the public thought. Mr. Palmer died one day of suspicious causes but foul play was inconclusive. Annie Palmer took control of the property and people weren't too suspicious until her two following husbands and her parents died all without warning. Now things are getting a little suspicious. The urban legend of Annie Palmer is that she was a witch and she would use dark magic to kill her victims. It's said that her evil spirit still inhabits the Rose Hall. A witch ghost sounds pretty serious, especially one that has killed people. That's not something you want to disturb for your own entertainment, right? Well, you totally can. You can take tours of the building which highlight all the legends surrounding the witch of the Rose Hall. And if you really want to bring some bad mojo into your life, you can take part in a seance to communicate with the spirit of Annie Palmer. I think the ghost of a murderous witch isn't something I would want to hang out with. At number 10 we have the Moundsville Penitentiary in West Virginia. Let's kick off this list with a classic haunted location. A giant prison. I have said this on this channel before. There is no such thing as a prison that is not haunted. You pack that much bloodlust into one building and you are going to stir up some very angry spirits that will never move on to the other side. The Moundsville Penitentiary was known for housing some of the worst criminals in the whole state and because it was opened in 1866 you can bet that a ton of them got the death penalty and it wasn't lethal injection back then. No that is a modern sympathy and back in the day they couldn't afford it. Most of the criminals that were sentenced to death in this facility were either hanged or sent to the electric chair. I know which one looks scarier but which one would hurt more. 
Well, all this violence, torture, and death has led to this building being one of the most haunted places in America. It was closed down in 1995, but it is still open to public tours, and many people have seen ghosts of inmates walking the halls. At number 9, we have La Recoleta Cemetery in Buenos Aires, Argentina. This is one of the largest cemeteries in the world, so it's no wonder that this place has made it onto the list. But beyond this place being extremely haunted, it is actually beautiful. The architecture is creepy and gothic in the best ways. It looks like it's pulled right out of the game Bloodborne. The entire place is laid with stone and brick and some of the tombs have amazing glass layered into them. And of course there is a bunch of ghosts. It's very common for people taking pictures at this gravesite to have unsuspected visitors in their photos and people filming will catch floating orbs flying through the air. The most famous ghost story of the area is the former groundskeeper. His name was David Ayeo and he was in charge of the place for nearly 30 years and then something happened. Maybe it was seeing so much death or maybe some people from the other side were tempting him with a better life after he passed on. But whatever it was, he took his own life. Now it's said that his ghost still walks the halls of the cemetery, checking the graves. And you can hear his keys clinking in his pocket as he walks around. At number 8 we have the Moon River Brewery in Savannah, Georgia. This place has been home to civil war debates and clashing ideologies for nearly a hundred years. You get that many angry drunks with hard stances on political opinions into one place, you can bet there's going to be a ton of fights and a few of them led to death. There's a man who was beaten to death in the bar and it's said that his ghost still walks around. People often see him standing by the pool tables. I wonder if he uses his ghostly powers to rig some of the games. At number 7 we have the Rolling Hills Asylum in New York. An insane asylum from the 19th century was just thinking about all the strange experiments that would take place on these people that had to be there. Things that they probably thought would cure these people but they didn't have the understanding of what was wrong back then. It just freaks me out. A place like this is the foundation of so many horror movies. The building has been shut down for a long time but has now become a hot spot for paranormal investigators. Several different teams of ghost hunters have gone to find out what is haunting this place and all of them have come back with some chilling results. Recordings of people yelling out in pain have been captured and a dark shadow has been spotted on the premises. Some people think it's the ghost of a former inmate while other people think it could be some sort of demonic presence who is feeding off the dark energy in the area. At number 6 we have the toll booth in Aberdeen United Kingdom. The toll booth went through an evolution of horrible housing. It seems like the building was destined to be used for nefarious needs. In the 18th century it was used as a building to jail and torture people who were involved in the Jacobite revolution. Some people were lucky enough to escape but those who could not had endless days of suffering. And if that was an enough after the place was no longer being used for prisoners, it went into the slave trade. And no, not just any slaves, but the building specialized in capturing and selling off child slaves. There is no form of slavery that is okay, but there is something about selling off child slaves that is extremely sinister. Now the place is packed full of ghosts and some people who visit say they can hear the rattling of chains from the former prisoners. At number 5 we have Kelly's Castle in Malaysia. An old abandoned castle that was never finished. This sounds like a prime location for a haunting and people in the area have put in some good effort to make sure that this place stays creepy. The castle has been left in a broken down state which gives it the feel of a mansion pulled right out of a Resident Evil game. Also during World War 2 there are rumors that soldiers would take prisoners up to the castle for executions and if that wasn't enough for you, the original owner of the castle died and his ghost is chosen to never leave. His ghostly figure can be seen passing through the walls. At number 4 we have the Tower of England. If you build a spire and then start chopping people's heads off in it, there's a good chance that those spirits are going to want to hang out for a little time after. I mean it's a cool spire, why would you ever want to leave? For centuries the Tower of England has been the location of public executions. Henry VIII famously killed two of his wives there. Also throughout different explorations of the tower there have been human remains discovered that were hidden throughout the building. Some people think there could be more bodies waiting to be found. People who go to visit the tower say they can sometimes see faces looking back at them through the windows. And the most famous occurrence is the presence of a cold hand on your shoulder and then when you look back to see who's there, there is absolutely nothing. At number 3 we have Pluckily Village in Kent, United Kingdom. This place has been dubbed the most haunted place in the entire United Kingdom. Think about the long history the UK has of plagues, wars, torture, raids, slavery and this place has come on top as the most haunted. That's a pretty big title. There have been a few ghosts that have been able to make their mark on the area and become constant attractions. There's a woman who walks through the fields at night sporting a sultry red dress. People who try to approach her say she runs away and vanishes into the night itself. There has also been bodies spotted pinned to trees. These rotting corpses will frighten the hell out of you but if you blink they will disappear. At number 2 we have McNabb House in Halifax, Canada. One of the most haunted places in Canada. This island has a dark history that dates back all the way to the 1700s. The island was used as a place to isolate people who were dying from cholera. 
They were told that they would be sent there to be cured, but actually they were sent there to die. There were massive graves dug out for all the bodies of the people who were slowly wasting away on the island. Because the island had already been used as a massive grave site, the locals decided it would be the perfect place for public executions. To this day, it's unknown how many bodies are still on the island, but it's not a place you want to go visit at night unless you want to be in a ghost mosh pit. Coming in number 10, we have Lapel House. Let's kick this off like we're in a Resident Evil game and head over to a haunted mansion. Here's a good question for all of you in the comments. Would you spend a night in a haunted mansion if that meant you could keep it? I think that would be a hard no for me because what am I going to do with a haunted mansion after I own it? I don't want to stay in it and I definitely don't think anyone is going to buy it. Well, La Peril House is one of the most famous haunted mansions in the world and it got its ghostly reputation for a good reason. During the Pacific War, the Japanese soldiers came through and needed a place to house some of their troops. They started to take any large building and use it as a garrison and the La Peril House was one of the most infamous because when another country's troops come through and then you house them they would be really grateful for you doing such a thing and they would treat the residents with respect no that doesn't happen at all the Lapero house was a site of a ton of horrible tortures it said that the wailing of someone being tortured to death can still be heard from the ghosts that walk the halls and there has also been several executions that took place at this mansion so if you want to see the head of a ghost rolling down some stairs this would be the best place to find it coming in number nine we have have Clark Air Base Hospital, Pampanga. Let's jump from one war story right into another. This air base hospital was mostly used by American soldiers during the Second World War. As you can imagine, it wasn't a very jolly place to go visit back then. Most of the people who were taken to this hospital were either injured in combat or suffering from some terrible sickness that occurred while they were in the Filipino jungles. That's the problem with waging war on unfamiliar grounds. You can get attacked by things you never expected. There's a lot of troops who died in agony in this hospital, and as you can imagine, a death in suffering brings with it a lot of ghosts. Shadow figures have been seen walking through the halls, and it's very normal to hear the sounds of someone weeping when no one else is around. Coming in number eight, we have Melinda Tunnel, Corregidor. I'm giving you back to back hospitals on this one. Why? Because they're a hot spot for ghosts, you silly goose. And just so we're clear, this was a tunnel that was turned into a hospital. Well, not so much a hospital, but a sick bay for injured American troops. And as you can imagine, there has been a lot of people who have died there. The area is now famous for ghostly figures walking around at night. They probably don't even know that they're dead, so it's safe to say that this tunnel isn't somewhere you want to get stuck after the sun goes down. Coming in at number seven, we have Manila City. Hall. You know your country has some good spooky stuff when the city hall is infested with ghosts. That's cool as hell. Well apparently this place is packed with ghosts and they show up like clockwork. As soon as the sun starts going down, spooky stuff will start to pop up all over the building. You get all the standard ghost stuff going on here. People say there's footsteps coming from floors that have no people on them. You can hear whispering coming out of thin air. There's even reports of doors bursting open randomly. I mean if you're going to be a ghost, you could at least be polite and not slam any of the doors. Thank you very much. Coming in at number six, we have Mount Maja Az. This island is haunted by a ton of stuff that is outside the world of ghosts, but is still very supernatural. Apparently this place has everything mystical going on over there. There have been reports of dwarves and elves on the island that are apparently really nice. If you come to the island with good intentions, then they will bless you with good luck. But if you come over there with some bad vibes, they will send you a ton of bad mojo that will ruin your whole life. Now there is something over there that is pretty creepy and would keep me away from this island even though they're supposed to be good luck giving dwarves. Apparently this place is also home to some vampires that roam the island looking for new victims to suck the life out of. Yeah, that doesn't sound like a hot vacation spot for me. Coming in number five, we have Baja Nepula San Ildefonso Bulacan. This is another place that the Japanese used as a garrison while they were waging war. And I don't know if you know this about the Japanese, but even though they seem cute and cuddly now, they weren't always like that. The Japanese used to be brutal. They would try to completely eradicate other cultures and they saw themselves as the superior Asian race. All others were disposable and the way they treated the Filipino people was horrible. At Baja Nepula, many people were beaten, tortured, and even s the place has such a horrible history that the building has been abandoned ever since and no one will go close to it. It's said that it has a horrible curse on it. Coming in at number 4 we have Herrera Mansion, Quezon. Now we're moving to a place that has a couple of famous ghosts. It's one thing to have a haunted attraction that has some voices and screams coming out of it or has stories of people feeling cold spots but actually seeing the same ghost over and over, that's something you can sell tickets to. Apparently there is a ghost of a Japanese soldier that will wander the property. He sometimes yells 
out or vanishes and then reappears in an instant. I mean that's kind of spooky but I've got a little added bonus that will make the whole thing a lot spookier. The ghost is headless. Yeah that's exactly what you need to give this place a little extra spooky vibe. Now even though our headless soldier is the star of the show, there is another set of ghosts that have been seen quite often. There's a ghost couple that has been seen walking around hand in hand around the building. It's thought that they could be the original owners of the building. Coming in at number 3 we have Balete Drive. One of the most famous kinds of hauntings you can have, the lady in white. There's a house on Balete Drive that is apparently home to a lady in white. She loves to watch people as they walk by and apparently doesn't like men very much. This could be because it's suspected that she was killed by Japanese soldiers. If you're a man driving by the lady in white's home, she might use her supernatural powers to teleport into your back seat and when you look into your rear view mirror, you will see her staring back at you with her body drenched in blood. Hopefully she doesn't leave a blood stain on the new leather. Coming in at number 2 we have Diplomat Hotel by Guyo. It's safe to say that the events that took place at the Diplomat Hotel were not very diplomatic. I would describe them as horrific and unnecessary but that's just me. This hotel was a hot spot for executions. This is a place where many nuns and priests were rounded up in an attempt to destroy Catholicism in the Philippines. These nuns and priests were executed in front of everyone and their heads were then kicked down the steps. Major disrespect on so many levels. Well when you cut off the heads of that many people then you're going to anger some ghosts. There's a ton of spirits that call this place home and many of them are headless. There's so many headless ghosts at this place they don't even have one superstar. They all work together as one major attraction. Coming in at the number 1 spot we have Ilolio. Let's step away from ghosts for a little while and check out something else supernatural that is haunting the island of Ilolio. Turns out there is something way scarier than a vampire in the Philippines. If you thought that the headless ghosts were bad then this thing is going to make you wish you were surrounded by them. This area in the Philippines is apparently home to the Tic Tic. It patrols the land and should be something that you try to avoid at all costs. The Tic Tic is described as a large bird or a bat and will stalk people as they walk in the dark and sneak up on them and then use its long tongue to start drinking their blood. But that's where its terrifying traits just start. Apparently this creature likes the taste of unborn children. It will find a woman who's pregnant and wait for her to go to sleep. Then it will use its long tongue to pierce the woman's stomach but do it in such a way where she doesn't wake up. And while she is asleep the Tic Tic will eat her baby. That sounds horrific. Thankfully a simple amulet that has been blessed with some holy water will keep this creature at bay. Starting us off here at number 10 is Black Hag's Cell. Found in a secluded hollow in Limerick County, Ireland lies a mess of crumbling ruins and the ghost of a satanic nun said to have been buried alive. And if that isn't just the perfect setup for a horror movie. As the legend goes, sometime during the 16th century the demonic nun would sneak out of her monastery at night to the nearby abbey. It was here she performed her satanic rituals such as sacrificing animals or placing curses on the locals to please the devil. But one day during a battle between rival houses the nun was wounded by an arrow and fell unconscious. Believing her to be dead they buried the nun immediately but soon farmers started hearing screams coming from her burial plot. At first they brushed it off as nothing but as the screams continued day in and day out they rushed to exhume the body worried they buried her too soon. But they were too late. The nun had died and was left with bloody fingers from trying to scratch her way out. It said at night her screams can still be heard echoing over the hills and locals don't dare go near in fear that she will possess anyone who steps foot on the land. Coming in at number 9, Hoya Bashu Forest. Known as the Bermuda Triangle of Transylvania, this forest is the breeding ground of unexplained disappearances as well as countless parents paranormal phenomena. The forest in fact has so many terrifying tales surrounding it that many locals refuse to even enter it. But according to those brave enough to try, they were attacked by something indescribable followed by hours of vomiting, nausea, migraines and left covered in scratches, bruises and even burns. Its most haunting legend is that of the forest girl who allegedly entered at just 5 years old and disappeared. 5 years later she emerged from the woods wearing the same dress as the 
day she went missing, and she had no memories or recollection of going missing or what had happened to her in the last five years. Some believe that the forest is possessed by a satanic cult. A tour guide once said to have found a group of 60 people gathered in a clearing, looking as if they were trying to open a gateway to another dimension, while others think it could be aliens. In 1968, a military technician released a photo he claimed to be a UFO, which was promptly hidden from the public before he was fired. And I mean, it's not every day someone from the military is confirming a UFO sighting. Well, whether it's haunted by a demon or a spot frequented by aliens, either way, I have no interest in checking it out for myself. Next up at number 8 here is the Snector House. Once home to the Snector family in the 1980s, they thought they'd found the perfect spot, as it was a fairly affordable house and close to the hospital where their son was being treated. But it wasn't until after they were all settled that they learned the house had operated as a mortuary for several decades since the 1920s. At first, everything seemed alright, but soon they discovered old equipment from the funeral home in their basement. Now this raised an eyebrow, but they brushed it off and didn't think much of it. That was until they uncovered that their backyard still contained many of the buried corpses, along with eerie photographs of the corpses hidden away in nooks and crannies. Soon they were being haunted by evil spirits, routinely hearing haunting noises and even seeing full bodied apparitions. The mother claims that when she was mopping the basement, the water would turn red as if it were blood, or that she would catch objects flying around the room while lights would aggressively flicker. At the time, there were rumors circulating that the formal funeral directors were guilty of necrophilia, which led to the house becoming haunted by an evil presence, seeking revenge on all that lived in the house for eternity. Coming in at number 7 is the Ancient Ram Inn. Rumored to be the most haunted building in England, there are no shortage of terrifying entities that haunt these grounds. Supposedly, the inn lies atop two ley lines, one of which directly intersects with Stonehenge. And if that wasn't enough cause for concern, it was also built over a 5,000 year old pagan burial ground. According to witnesses, a witch, a poltergeist, a succubus, and an incubus haunt the property, but many think it is much, much more. Legend has it that there are so many demons haunting the grounds that visitors routinely had to get exorcisms after their visit to the inn. Then in the 1960s, a man named John Humphreys bought the house and decided to make it his own. He had heard the rumors, but believed they were just that. Rumors. But on his first night, he felt something strange. There was something watching him, something very, very evil. Despite his inclination that a dark entity possessed his house, he continued to live there, often recounting paranormal sightings like strange voices, orbs of light appearing out of thin air, and said that once a force even grabbed him by the arm and dragged him around the living room. Even so, John remained until his dying days. And I mean, you do you, but if it were me, I would have been gone after the first night. Coming in at number 6 is Castle Huska. Located in North Prague, this castle was built back in the 13th century. Now there are a few things that are strange about this castle. Firstly, many of its windows are fake. They are simply glass panes in front of complete walls. Secondly, it lacks common things. There is no water source, no kitchen, and for years after its initial construction, there were no occupants. Lastly, the castle was built in a remote area. It was not near any trading routes, nor did it possess any kind of strategic value. That is because it was built for one reason and one reason only, to cover a large hole in the ground. Now you might be asking yourself, what's so bad about that? Well, according to legend, the hole was actually a gateway to hell, and Satan himself was was said to appear at this very spot. In an attempt to close off the gateway, the castle was constructed atop the hole, hoping to seal it for eternity. But during World War II, German soldiers settled in and used the castle to conduct experiments of the occult variety, and it's believed that these rituals brought out the evil spirits back into our realm. Today both Satan and some of the evil soldiers haunt the hallowed halls, and some say if you listen closely, you might just be able to hear the scratching 
string of demons trying to join them. Coming in at number 5, The Rose Hall Great House. According to legend, a woman named Annie Palmer moved to Jamaica in the early 1800s. Annie was young, but she was smart and had one big goal in mind, marry rich. While she may have looked sweet and innocent, Annie was actually a renowned voodoo practitioner and became known as the White Witch by the locals. Anyway, after a short while in Jamaica, she met Mr. John Palmer, the owner of the Rose Hall estate, and wasted no time locking him down. After the wedding, Annie moved into the estate with her husband, but not long after, he mysteriously died. As it turns out, it was not so mysterious after all, as Annie had poisoned her husband, and she continued to repeat this pattern twice more while ruling over the estate. And it wasn't just her husband's that Annie was cruel to, she was notoriously brutal to the slaves on the plantation, never hesitating to any one of them that stepped out of line or dared question her. Then there were her lovers. Annie was rumored to have copious amounts of lovers, many of which were enslaved to her, and incidentally, this would also be her downfall. After one of his family members, one of her enslaved lovers, Taku, snuck into Annie's room and killed her in her sleep. Taku was also a voodoo practitioner and fearing she would haunt him after death, placed a curse on her grave to keep her entrapped. But it said the ritual was never completed, so the ghost of Annie escapes each night, wreaking havoc on trespassers and terrifying all that see her. Next up at number 4 is the Ostrich Inn. During the 17th century, this inn was owned by a man named John. John Jarman and his wife. The two welcomed travelers from far and wide, but had a special appetite for wealthy customers. When such folks wandered into their inn, they took very kindly to them, offering them free ale and a special room above the kitchen, adorned with much nicer furnishings than the rest. But as I'm sure you've guessed, there was a huge catch. You see, the bed in this special room was nailed to the floor, and under the bed was a secret trap door. During the night, while their wealthy visitor was sleeping, the husband and wife would pull a lever in their kitchen, dropping the trap door and shooting the poor traveler into a vat of boiling water. Once they were dead, they would rob the wealthy traveler and then hide their body in the cellar. And they might have gotten away with it too if it weren't for Thomas Cole. Cole was a wealthy clothing maker and was swindled by the couple before in the same way as many before him. But luckily, at the time of the incident, his horse happened to break loose and was wandering the town. Folks recognized the horse and thought that Cole must have fallen off, and so a search party began, eventually discovering him dead in the inn. The couple was arrested and sentenced to be hanged, but prior to their death, they confessed to 60 people in their inn. To this day, many have witnessed their evil spirits haunting the halls as well as all the souls whose lives were lost. Coming in at number 3 is The Demon House. Once the home of Mr. Cranmer, he claims that he and his family lived in this house of horrors for 18 years before an exorcism in 2006 finally drove the demon away. Cranmer says that over the years he would watch helplessly as blood dripped from his walls and invisible hands hands assaulted him and his family, fearing each day that it might be his last. But where did this possession begin? Well, Cranmer believed it all started with Dr. James Mahan, a former tenant of the home. Dr. Mahan was an alcoholic who routinely performed illegal operations on women in his basement. But not because he was looking to help these women, no, it was because he had a deal with a demon. Cranmer says the demon who haunts the house is Moloch, a demon who feeds off of sacrifices, and that Moloch had possessed Dr. Mahan in order to feed off his basement operations. Once Dr. Mahan died, there was no one left to please this demon, and so he tortured all the families who moved in after, hoping to be able to scare them into giving him what he wanted. Luckily, Mr. Cranmer was able to rid the house of Moloch, and his family escaped the torture unpossessed. Coming in at number 2, The House of Death. Once the home of actress and poet Jan Bryant Bartell in the 1960s, the house holds a reputation for housing some of the most demonic entities in all of New York City. With 
Within weeks of moving in, Jan knew something was deeply wrong with the house. She would often feel the touch of an icy hand across the back of her neck or hear footsteps follow her around the empty house. The house always reeked like something was rotting or dying and her dogs were always barking into nothingness. Then one day, one of her dogs died, as if out of nowhere, so she decided to take matters into her own hands and called on a psychic medium. But this only angered the demons living inside. During the first session, the medium went into an unusual trance, speaking about the hundreds of bodies buried underneath the house. Jan knew it wasn't the medium speaking, and it was then that she learned how many people had been or taken their own lives while living here. Then all of a sudden, the medium's eyes bulged out of her head and she started shouting that she would never leave in a deep demonic voice. The encounter was enough for Jan to leave and never return. A few years later, she published a book about her life in the haunted house, just weeks before she sadly took her own life. Still think it's just a coincidence? Years later, in 1987, a father brutally killed his own daughter in a drug fueled rage, and many believe that he could have been possessed by the very same demon that Jan ran away from all those years before. And last up for you today in our number one spot, the Armstrong Street House. In 1970, a couple named Anne and Roger Brock moved their family into a beautiful four bedroom house in Kokomo, Indiana. The family didn't have a ton of money, but they were able to score the house for just five grand, which in hindsight, could have been a clue. Mere hours after the family moved in, they began to experience strange things. Lights were flickering and noises were appearing, but they brushed it off as nothing. Then one night, one of the daughters, Lana, was awoken by sudden shaking all around her bed. She thought it was an earthquake at first, but then she looked out her window to see a strange man, seemingly drenched, standing right beside her bedroom window, staring at her. Lana freaked out, but then as quickly as he appeared, he was gone. This became routine for poor Lana, and demons started haunting her every night. One night, she heard a knock at her door, and assuming it was her parents, she went to answer it, only to have her mouth covered by an invisible hand. She tried to scream, but the hand wouldn't let her. Suddenly, her dog appeared and distracted the entity, allowing Lana to scream for help, but this only angered the spirit. To get back at her, it picked up the dog and threw it out the window, sending it plunging to its demise. Years later, they learned that someone was killed in the house, which could explain the tortures, but still, not a single member of the family has ever dared return. Starting off at number 10, the Shanghai Tunnels in Portland, Oregon. Portland was one of the most dangerous ports in the United States during the early 19th century, and it was the epicenter of Shanghai, a form of human trafficking. It's crazy to think human trafficking still happens today, and tunnels are still the way to do it. According to the local lore, swinders preyed upon unsuspected men in the local salons, which were often outfitted with trap doors that deposited the victims directly into a network of underground tunnels. These men were supposedly held captive, drugged, and eventually transported to the waterfront where they were sold to ships as unpaid laborers, aka slaves. Some worked for several years before finding their way back home. The tunnels are said to be haunted by the aggrieved spirits of the captives who died in the dark recesses behind the city. Random facts, the practice of kidnapping men to work on ships came to be known as Shanghing because the ships that were sold to were often headed to East Asia. Number 9, Eastern State Penitentiary, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The castle-like Eastern State Penitentiary took solitary confinement to a whole new levels when it was built in 1829. Prisoners lived alone, exercised alone, and ate alone. When inmates were left in a cell, a guard would cover his head with a hood so he wouldn't be seen. The prison had to abandon its solitary confinement system due to overcrowding from 1913 until it was closed in 1970. Although the forms of punishment did not get any less severe, I mean chaining an inmate's tongue to his wrists, that's just one example, a true story. The site's one of most haunted places in America's right now, will welcome thousands of visitors every year, both for its museums and annual terror behind the wall celebration, which features six haunted attractions within the prison walls for Halloween. I mean, when you talk about an attraction inside of a prison, um, no thanks. Well, it was reported paranormal happenings have included dismembered laughter, shadowy figures, and pacing of footsteps. Uh 
Oh, sorry, I, I thought I was hearing footsteps behind me right now. Okay, I'm pretty freaked out with this one, so let's move on to the next one. So next up, number eight, we have House of the Seven Gables, Salem, Massachusetts. Now, this house did not steal its name from the classic novel. In fact, it inspired the novel itself. Salem is known for its history of the famous witch trials, and that's where Sabrina Spillman lived. But it happens to be the birthplace of Nathaniel Hawthorne, who used this 17th century house as inspiration for his famous 1851 novel, The House of the Seven Gables. Aside from its beautiful yet spooky facade, the house is surrounded by paranormal activity and ghost sightings all based on personal experiences of staff. Every October, the house offers spooky tours as well as weekly performances of two plays. The Legacy of the Hanging Judge and Spirit of the Gables. Would you guys see a play in a haunted town's haunted house? Coming in hot at number seven on this list, The Stanley Hotel in Estes Park. If you've read or seen The Shining, you know the feeling of this often snowbound hotel. It's the location Stephen King based his Overlook Hotel upon. It may not look like the film unless you watch the 1990s made for TV movie version which uh, yeah I don't think anyone has. I mean just walking to your room can drain you. So one stiff drink might have you seeing ghosts or a couple kids chanting red rum, red rum. Number six we're bringing you Red Onion Saloon Skagway Alaska established in 1898 as a brothel for miners during the Klondike Gold Rush. Alaska's Red Onion Saloon it had a feature that set it apart from other bordellos. It used dolls to help run its business, so always a good sign, right? Well, every day, 10 dolls would be placed on the bar downstairs, each one representing one of the ladies working in the upstairs room. A customer would choose one of the dolls, at which point it would lay down on the bar to indicate that particular workers were occupied. When the customers came back downstairs, the doll would be returned to her sitting position to let other potential clients know that she was available. Well, fast forward to 2019 when the Red Onion Saloon still operates as a bar and restaurant yet the dolls are still on display and it offers tours of the upstairs rooms which are preserved as sort of like a mixed shaped brothel museum. As if these dolls weren't creepy enough there were reports of Lydia a former madame of a brothel haunting the site complete with cold spots and lingering spells of perfume rafting through the walls. I mean all creepiness aside I'm more curious about the, how this place got named Red Onion? I mean, they could have came up with any other name. Well, let me know what you guys would call this in the comment section below. Give me a name. All right, we're halfway on this list. Number five, we got RMS, Queen Mary in Long Beach, California. This retired ocean liner sailed the Atlantic Ocean from 1936 to 1967. During the first three years at sea, the Queen Mary carried Hollywood celebrities like Elizabeth Taylor. Her days as a luxurious ship were short-lived in 1939. She was stripped of her her amenities and began her second life as a gray ghost, a World War II troop ship. At the conclusion of the war, she was restored to her former glory and traversed the Atlantic for nearly two more decades. On Halloween 1967, the Queen Mary departed on her last cruise, eventually docking in Long Beach, California, her final resting place. The ship is reportedly haunted by the spirits of those who died aboard, such as the young sailor who was crushed to death by a door in in the engine room and a crew member who was murdered in cabin B340. Number four, Lizzie Borden, bed and breakfast in Fall River. So this location came up on nearly every search on our quest to find this top 10 list for you guys. Well, you've likely heard of the children's rhyme, Lizzie Borden took an ax, gave it to her mother 40 wax. When she saw it, what she had done, she gave her father 41. Well, you can not only visit is the scene of that famous 1892 double homicide. You can also sleep at the Borden's home, eat their last meal, Johnny Cakes, a thick cornmeal pancakes and eggs, in case you were wondering, and spend the last nights in the bedroom where the bodies of Lizzie's stepmother Abigail was found. Someone who stayed there said, I can attest, this home painstakingly furnished to look exactly as it did on the morning of the murders, well that will creep you right out. Better though, the 175 year old property hosts up to 20 20 overnight guests, in which some of them for some reason, it's a tradition when you go to this place, they will actually whip out a Ouija board. I mean, I'm not down for Ouija, that is a real life situation that can happen, and let alone whipping out a Ouija board in a haunted place. And number one, we have Trans Allegheny Lunatic Asylum, Western 
Eastern and West of Virginia, this four botting asylum began construction in 1858 and opened to patients in 1864. The massive structure was designed by architect Richard Andrews to maximize sunlight and fresh air. It was believed that the building itself would serve as a healing environment. It was designed for 250 people housed and 2,400 patients in crowded conditions. I mean, that's a pretty big range going from 250 to 2,400. Patients were physically restrained and often given inhumane treatments such as the electroshock therapy and lobotomies, which was very popular back in the day. After more than a century in operation, the facility was forced to close in 1994, which when you think about it wasn't too long ago, within the last 30 years. And it was due to the reforms in mental health and treatment and the deterioration of the building. Hundreds of patients died during the asylum tenure and scores of guests and ghost hunters have claimed they're seeing shadowy figures roaming around the facility. Coming in number 10, we have the Hiroshima Haunted Peace Memorial. No one has ever forgotten the Hiroshima and Nagasaki incident in which the atomic bomb destroyed the lives of around 140,000 people. The attack took place at the Hiroshima Professional Industrial Promotion Hall, which has now changed to the Hiroshima Peace Memorial. Now, 75 years later, the survivors of the faithful and historic day are old and their stories are fading through the sands of time. The memorial, which is a popular attraction to pay respects and learn about you know the devastation that the atomic bomb caused, which is absolutely insane that something like that actually took place. Well, it caused the place to be extremely arid. The place has been claimed to be haunted as the people nearby have heard uncanny videos near the dome. Not only this, but there have been numerous incidents of electronic voice phenomena where you can actually hear the atomic bomb exploding itself. Up next, number eight, Round Schoolhouse, which is a creepy building. Scary apparitions, noisy ghosts, floating lights, irregular shapes, abandoned vehicles, every paranormal activity in the book have been rumored to have happened at the Round Schoolhouse in Hokuedo. The school was built in a distinctive round shape in 1906 and run like an elementary school. However, it shut down in the 1970s and since then it's been abandoned. Soon after these stories of paranormal sightings started coming in and several paranormal enthusiasts made a beeline to check out these stories. Many of them came back with troubling stories of things they saw and heard and it is said that a few of them returned raving mad and talked incoherently. Perhaps the first report of paranormal activity at the school was an instance of a little girl who was spirited away Way right in front of her classmates. According to the legend, searches for the missing girl turned up nothing from the police. After the closure, more rumors spread. Coming in hot at number seven on this list, the old Inaki Tunnel in the spot of a gruesome murder. And it's located deep within the mountains of Fukuoka. In December of 1988, the charred remains of a man aged 20 years old was found within this mountain's tunnel. The perpetrators of this gruesome act were reported to be a group of teenage boys. The area also has a history that goes back over 1,000 years as a training ground for the esoteric Buddhist practitioners who claim the area to be be a spiritual hotspot of lost souls. These claims were later backed by modern spiritualists who visited the mountains area in the aim of recording a television special, but probably refused to go further due to the foreboding spiritual atmosphere. The tunnel itself has been sealed off with concrete blocks, but an opening in the top of the tunnel still allows entry for anyone foolish enough to climb down. Well, this tunnel is no longer in use and it's far off from a beaten path, meaning no assistance would be able to reach you if you were in an emergency situation. Number six, we're bringing you one of the Bonin Islands in the Pacific Ocean, far south of the Japanese mainland, Iwa Jima Island has forever been ingrained in the culture consciousness as a historic battlefield in World War II. However, its significance doesn't stop there, as it was the home to Mount Suribachi, a 161 meter high volcano and it's been listed as one of the most dangerous active volcano in the world according to the University of Manchester. It is said that there is a chance of this volcano erupting sometime in the next 100 years which would in turn lead to huge 25 meter high tsunami waves hitting the coast of both China and Japan leading to a potential death toll in the millions. The ghost stories of Iwa Jima are not surprisingly related to the 40 day battle 
battle waged on the island, in which many thousands of soldiers on both the US and the Japanese side lost their lives. Okay, we're halfway there. Number five, we've got Okikiwa, well, the Shrieking Banshee. Within the Himiji Castle is an old well with a very intriguing tale of love and tragedy. It is one of the most haunted places in Japan, as it's where a ghost appears at night and screams. The ghost is a spirit of Okiku, a young girl who served the samurai Aoyama Tessin. Aoyama loved Akiku, but his love was not reciprocated in what could be termed as harassment today. He hid a valuable article and blamed it on Okiku. He offered not to punish her if she became his lover, but Akiku wasn't going to have any of it. She refused to accept it. In a fit of rage, Aoyama threw her in the well, killing her. This is why she can still be heard wailing in silence of the night, just screaming over and over again in the well. And next up, number three on this list, of places that you should not visit and we're talking about Zoshigeya Cemetery in a place where people are unwilling to visit at any point of the day. Some people have claimed to witness faces and white hands appearing from the trees. Three people have committed at this place and it is believed that their souls remain there and they terrify lone wanderers. Zoshigeya Cemetery is counted in as one of the most haunted places in Tokyo. Number two, we have the Labyrinth, the scary hospital. If you're looking for a haunted health attraction in Japan, but you want something more exciting than the Hughes 10 Bosch, then head to Fuji Q Highland Theme Park. The haunted house at the theme park is one of the best in the country and will truly leave you shook. The house is based on a hospital theme and it is inspired by a real hospital at the base of Mount Fuji where a hospital harvested body organs and they take it from unwitting patients. It is said that these patients come back to haunt the doctors and it is in the presence of the labyrinth. It's 900 meters of pure gore, horror, and tricks that will leave you wondering if this is just an attraction or if this house is really haunted. I'll leave that one up to you guys. Number 10, Satan's Castle San Bernardino. Yes, this place is called Satan's Castle and it's a no from me. Satan's Castle sits on a mountainous region that is filled with both religious and satanic lore dating back to the 19th century. There are said to be underground tunnels linking to various points of interest across the mountain, which were used during the Prohibition era. These tunnels were created mostly for trans transportation and smuggling booze, but also served for darker purposes. One of these tunnels is rumored to connect a Catholic church to Satan's castle. It is said to have been the grounds for dark ritualistic practices, which included both human and animal sacrifices, along with other dark ceremonies. Not to mention inside one of the rooms, a pentagram used to be painted on the ground. Local Christians painted over it with the John 3.16 verse, but the pentagram always bled through. Definitely sounds satanic to me and I will not be visiting there. Number 9. Preston Castle, Ioni the Preston School of Industry, also known as Preston Castle, was a reform school that opened in June 1894 and was considered one of the oldest and best known reform schools in the United States. The boys there grew their own food, raised livestock, and learned farming trades. Additionally, there was a print shop, bakery, and cobbler shop where the boys could learn skills for self-preservation in the real world. The superintendent controlled the life inside the school and discipline was extreme. Starvation, isolation, and public paddling and lashings, and severe strategies were common at Preston. Now, this school has seen a lot of death. There are 17 men buried on the school grounds because they died there. Samuel Goines had his life ended after attempting to escape from the school. In 1950, Preston's head housekeeper, Anna Corbin, was beaten to death in the school's basement as well, and they never found out who did it. Employees and visitors believe that these young men are still haunting the school, which only closed in 1960, by the way. Those who have toured the grounds since have reported many strange sights and sounds, slamming doors, falling objects, disembodied voices, and ghostly physical contact. Number 8. Camp Pendleton, Area 41, San Diego Camp Pendleton is a coastal marine corpse base with a dark history. This place is divided up into sections and Area 41 is haunted. Locks have been tampered with, furniture displaced, items gone missing, and strange noises are heard throughout the camp. Many think that this is done by one broken hearted marine in particular. 
This man was in love and had recently asked his girlfriend to marry him. After she had said yes, he thought his life was going great, but it didn't last long. The marine was in his housing unit when his fiance got a hold of him and told him that she was ending the relationship. He was so upset that he ended his life in a second story room of the barracks. Now, some marines are convinced his spirit remains in the area and haunts Area 41 in particular. A general feeling of unease is common here, and to this day, marines claim that they hear the faint sound of a man softly humming the Jeopardy game show theme song around the grounds. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Number 7. The Hotel de Coriando, San Diego Hotel de Coriando is a historic hotel that opened in 1888. Kate Morgan has haunted this hotel since 1892, the year she checked in and awaited the arrival of her husband. The two were traveling con artists, and not surprisingly, her husband never showed up, and four days later, Kate was found dead at the bottom of an outdoor staircase leading to the Coronado Beach. Today, those who check into Kate's room which is now room 3312, have had spooky experiences to say the least. Curtains blowing even though the windows are closed, objects moved by unseen hands, murmuring sounds and even sightings of Kate walking down the hallways and peering out the windows have all been reported. Her ghost is often seen both in the hotel and on the beach. Now room 3519, formerly room 3502, is also haunted. Once a maid's room, it's been the site of numerous paranormal occurrences such as objects moving around by themselves. Number 6. The Whaley House, San Diego The Whaley House is the oldest brick structure in Southern California and was the home of Thomas Whaley and his family. At various times, it also housed Whaley's General Store, San Diego's Second County Courthouse, and the first commercial theater in San Diego. The house has witnessed more history than any other building in the city, and it is extremely haunted. One of the most infamous ghosts there is the spirit of Yankee Jim Robinson. Yankee Jim was hanged in the gallows where the house now stands in 1852 after being convicted of stealing horses. Thomas Whaley himself, who owned and lived in the house with his family years later, said they could hear heavy footsteps going up and down the stairs. Now visitors have reported cold spots and the feeling of their chest and throat tightening within the home. Others claim to have seen Yankee Jim 2, an apparition that appears and disappears when you get too close. Today, and for many years, visitors to the house have also reported seeing Thomas. They usually see him wearing a frock coat and pantaloons standing on the second story landing. Others have seen his wife Anna, usually floating around in the garden or the downstairs room. Her ghost, which appears white and billowy, seems to just drift about and then disappears. Number Number 5. Winchester Mystery House, San Jose Now after finding out what this place is, I really want to visit here. I mean just by the name Mystery House, it's cool. Now some backstory on the house, Sarah Winchester lived a tragic yet interesting life. She married William Wirt Winchester in 1862 who was a very wealthy man. Sadly though, her husband, mother and father-in-law all passed away within the same year. To deal with her grief, she moved to California after gaining a large inheritance from her husband. Then on top of all of that, Sarah was being haunted by the spirits of those whose lives were ended by the Winchester rifle which her husband's company had invented. After her husband passed away, a psychic told her to evade the spirits, she would need to move out west, buy a home, and build non-stop. She took 36 years to construct the home, and this house has 6 kitchens, 2,000 doors, 10,000 windows, 17 chimneys, 160 rooms, and many doors and stairs that lead to nowhere. Workers and visitors swear they hear howling at night, loud creaking, and sometimes the kitchen smells like someone is actively cooking. But regardless if you believe in ghosts or not, the house is absolutely stunning. Number 4. Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel, Los Angeles the Hollywood Roosevelt is considered to be one of the most haunted hotels in Los Angeles. It first opened its doors in 1927 and was a frequent home to Marilyn Monroe, who often stayed in the second floor cabana. Interestingly, the doors to this hotel are still open, allowing visitors to spend the night in Marilyn's suite, and some people claim to have seen Marilyn's ghost smiling and blowing kisses at them in their hotel mirrors. Hotel workers often talk about seeing the ghost of Charlie Chaplin and feel temperatures drop quickly from one room to the next. 
the apparition of Montgomery Clift has been blamed for patting guests' shoulders and watching maids in room 928, where he stayed for three months while filming from here to eternity. The ghost of Carol Lombard has also been spotted floating around the upper floors, and in the Blossom Room, where the first Oscars were held, two ghosts have been spotted, a presence of a tuxedoed man, and a presence of a man in a white suit. Seems like if you want to meet a dead celebrity, the Roosevelt Hotel is the place to go. Number 3. Alcatraz San Francisco Bay The famous maximum security prison Alcatraz Federal Penitentiary earned a reputation as one of the most brutal and inhumane prisons in the country during its day. The strong currents around the island and cold water temperatures made escape nearly impossible, and the prison became one of the most notorious in American history. The prison closed in 1963, and the island is now a major tourist attraction. A total of 36 prisoners made 14 escape attempts, 23 were caught alive, 6 had their lives ended by guards during their escape, 2 drowned, and 5 are listed as missing and presumed drowned. Now, During its 29 years in use, Alcatraz held some of the most notorious American criminals, including Al Capone, George Machine Gun Kelly, and Bumpty Johnson. Today, it's a tourist attraction that many believe to be haunted. Inexplicable events happen, like the sound of someone playing the banjo. Many believe this to be the spirit of Al Capone, who spent his last days at the prison playing a banjo in the shower room to avoid being injured in the yard. The smell of smoke, the sounds of cell doors slamming, disembodied voices, moaning, and screams have also all been reported. Number 2. Queen Mary, Long Beach Queen Mary is a retired British ocean liner that sailed from 1936 to 1967. She sailed to the port of Long Beach, California, where she is permanently docked. The city of Long Beach bought the ship to serve as a tourist attraction, featuring restaurants, a museum, and a hotel, but claims were made that the ship was haunted. There are resident spirits, including Jackie, the little girl who haunts the first class pool, John Petter, who was crushed by a watertight door, senior second officer William Eric Stark, who accidentally drank dry cleaning fluid instead of gin, and the cook, who was baked alive by his own kitchen staff during World War II. But most arguably, the most notorious location on the ship for paranormal activity is room B340. Reports claim someone was knocking on the door in the middle of the night, bathroom lights turning on by themselves, the sink faucet turning on and off on its own, and unexplained bathroom doors shutting. Some guests have reported the covers of their bed being pulled off while asleep and waking to see a dark figure standing at the foot of the bed. There are even more stories about this place, but I don't have enough time to fit them all in. If you're really interested in Queen Mary, I say do some homework on it because it definitely gets creepier. And coming in at number one is the Cecil Hotel, Los Angeles. The Cecil Hotel opened in 1925 as a well furnished hostelry frequented by respectable people, but that didn't last long. As downtown became more and more dangerous, the Cecil became a place where bad people stayed, like the Night Stalker aka Richard Ramirez and Austrian killer Jack Underweger spent time there. The Black Dahlia was rumored to have had her last drink at the hotel bar before she turned up dead a few miles away. In 1962, Pauline Otten jumped from the ninth floor window, ending her life. That same year, Julia Moore jumped from an eighth floor window. And and Helen Guerin from the seventh floor in 1954. The Cecil Hotel may have rebranded itself recently as the Stay on Main, but it just can't shake its reputation as a place where scary things happen. In 2013, the body of Canadian tourist Elisa Lamb was found in the hotel's rooftop cistern. Her body was discovered by a hotel maintenance worker investigating complaints of flooding and low water pressure. And yes, people had been showering in and drinking that water. Ugh. And last but not least, the ghost of a boy has reportedly been photographed outside a fourth floor window. Spooky. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have Koh Lip Island. I'll be honest, this is a place that, despite the spooky tales, is probably still on many people's travel destinations list because it is so beautiful. Like much of Thailand, it truly is seemingly idyllic. When it comes to the haunting scene here, we turn to those who inhabit the island, the Chow Lei people. They claim to share their island with the whole host of spirits that they call the Ha Tao. You would think that a ghost filled island would would keep people away, but they've found their own way to keep these spirits appeased, and that is by offering them strawberry pop and cupcakes. I mean, 
Apparently it pays to be a spirit. Sounds pretty awesome. You get to chill on an island and you get poppin' cupcakes, despite the incredible scenery and the amazing hospitality of those who are local to the island. Many people report feeling some sort of uneasy presence on Kolip Island. Number nine, Watsin Suk Hell Garden. Gardens are supposed to be peaceful. It's supposed to be a place to grow, reflect, you know, swat bees for hours on end, all that good stuff. But when it comes to the Watsin Suk Hell Garden, you won't be finding any peace whatsoever. This one's a little odd, a little spooky. Thailand is very spiritual. And this specific garden is home to hundreds of sculptures, each depicting the horrors that are awaiting in Buddhist hell. Yeah, they're very scary to look at. Unlike other gardens in Thailand, this one was built quite recently, believe it or not. The hell garden was built in 1986. Now the idea is to keep you from committing any sins, and I gotta admit, they nailed it. Yeah, pretty much did the best they could. Olivia and I like to walk through graveyards for fun sometimes, so I don't know. I personally would love to walk through this. Would you do it? In our number eight spot today, we have Mei Ram Phung Beach. For this one, we are taking a trip to the eastern coast of Thailand to the Rayong province. Here lies this beach, which attracts tourists from all over the world. Earlier this year, the shores of this beach were actually hit with the results of an oil spill, but that isn't the most frightening thing that's happened here. Apparently, this area saw a few people who lost their lives in the water, and these horrible incidents happened quite close together. Since then, people have reported a sort of uneasy feeling as they visited visited the beach, and some have even claimed to have left feeling haunted and have not been able to shake the feeling. Number seven, Kokam Noi Ghost Island. Love the name, Ghost Island. Really gets to the point for this next one here. I like it. Ghost Island, Kokam Noi is located in the eastern gulf of Thailand. Now it's close to the Konbury province. There is a plethora of reasons why this island is for sure haunted. Let's list them. During World War II, American soldiers constructed a base on the island. The deep waters surrounding the islands made it a pretty ideal stop for large warships. Now, unfortunately, there were swarms of mosquitoes that were also sharing the same island. So a great amount of those soldiers died and had to be buried on Koh Nam Noi Island. Now today, there's a Muslim cemetery on the one side and a Chinese cemetery on the other. All things considered, I couldn't imagine a more peaceful resting place. In our number six spot today, we have Ayuta, a historical park. This national park is a place with incredibly rich history, and it is actually a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The site was founded in 1350, and it became the second capital of Siam after Sukhothai. The site ended up being destroyed by the Burmese in the 18th century, but despite these ruins, even today you can still get the sense of how wonderful this place once was. With history like this, it's definitely no surprise that this place is said to be haunted. The most popular haunting story from this location is in regards to the ghost of Pu. Sam Fao Sap, who is said to guard the city's treasures. Even Prince Bira of Siam reported seeing this ghostly apparition, and not many people can say that they have a royal backing them up when it comes to their paranormal claims. Number five, River Kwai Bridge. I don't like bridges in general. I have no idea how they work structurally. It freaks me out when I look at them and to think about them. When it comes to Hellfire Pass, no chance, not, not gonna do that one. First of all, big fan of the name. These are all scary names. They hint towards the impending doom, I kinda like it. The River Kwai Bridge saw brutal combat during World War II, but the Death Railway alias actually comes from the dark history during the initial construction of the River Kwai Bridge, where a countless number of prisoners or tradesmen all lost their lives while laying the 260 mile long track. The track runs from Thailand to Burma and almost all of it is deemed Haunted, so yeah, big note from me. Hard, hard pass on this pass. In our number four spot today, we have Tui Watana Deserted House. If you've seen Final Destination, the vibes that this spooky abandoned house is giving will definitely be a little familiar. Legend goes that a group of friends entered this house once to have a little fun in a place they probably shouldn't have been. You know, young people, everyone did stupid stuff. But it turns out there might be a higher price to pay when it comes to this place. Since then, it is said that this group of friends has seen members of the group dying in some strange or very elaborate circumstances. One passed away in a car accident, the other in a house fire. It is said that the remaining members of the group believes that they may have been the target of a vengeful spirit that was angry that they entered that house. I hope they all stay far away from roller coasters and tanning beds for sure. And maybe just don't drive behind any trucks carrying wood just to be safe. Number three, the Southern Unique. Commonly referred to as, you guessed it, 
Ghost Tower. The Sathorn Unique is a colossal, unfinished skyscraper, and it's gonna stay that way for probably ever. Upon first glance, this looks like any city, right? Cranes sticking out of the building, there's scaffolding just waving like a flag in the wind, it's the usual. Now, not all these construction zones, however, have this many reports of paranormal activity. This building looks massive. You stare up from the streets of downtown Bangkok and you get the chills. Even though construction began in the 90s, the building still has not been completed post-financial crisis. Now, one major incident that deems the Southern unique as haunted took place in December 2014. A photographer snuck into the building to take photos of the sunrise, but instead found the body of a Swedish man on the 43rd floor. It was determined that the man had sadly taken his own life. In our number two spot today, we have the Bayok Sky Hotel. The haunting tales of this location can be attributed to the significant number of workforce deaths that have been reported here. During the construction of this luxury hotel, it is said that three of the workers fell to their rather untimely deaths. Now, this sky-high tower is said to be haunted by the souls of those who fell. Both staff of the hotel as well as guests staying there have reported seeing things like shadows lurking through the hallways. It doesn't stop here, however. Some guests have even reported their items being moved seemingly on their own, and there's also been reports of just a general feeling of uneasiness, a feeling like they're being watched. It truly gives me shivers just thinking about it, but I'm sure stories like this only make this hotel more desirable for those interested in all things paranormal. And finally, number one, Bong Pyu Shoe Factory. We'll finish this list off with an abandoned shoe factory located in Samut Prakan. The factory suffered this freak accident that sadly led to many casualties of workers. The air compressor malfunctioned in some way and ultimately it erupted. It was quite fast and very tragic, but the factory owner continued business afterwards Anyways, now after that point, workers one by one ended up leaving. They were quitting their jobs on the spot, all claiming to have encountered the spirits of the previous workers who had lost their lives. Now, word spread quite fast, so business slowed down drastically. The owner, as well, sadly took their own life in the same factory. So it's no surprise that the building remains untouched still to this day. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the Fairmont Banff Spring Hotel. This Canadian hotel is absolutely legendary, but despite the spooky tales, tourism remains as high as ever. This hotel was built in 1888 in order to encourage tourists and to sell train tickets, and while it certainly did just that, this chateau-style hotel was only the icing on the cake to a trip to the gorgeous Rocky Mountains and all that waits in the Banff National Park. Through the years, though, several guests have had some haunting stories to tell, which included reports of ghost sightings. These ghosts are thought to reside in the hotel, and they include a bride who allegedly fell down the stone staircase during her wedding, which led to her untimely departure, or the legend of Sam the Bellman. This legend has it that Sam worked at the hotel until 1975, and before leaving, he claimed that he would come back to haunt the hotel. It is said that his spirit can be seen in the hotel helping people with their bags. In our number 9 spot today, we have Zunantinich. This location sits deep in the jungles of Belize, located less than a mile from the border of Guatemala. It has an unbelievably rich history as it is an ancient Maya ruin that has been abandoned for the last thousand years. In 1890, this site had its modern discovery, and since then it has been an important site for archaeology, an amazing tourist attraction, but also it is said to be a hot spot for the paranormal. It is said that the site is haunted by a female ghost. She has black hair and glowing red eyes. Referred to as the Stone Lady, it is said that she was first spotted by one of the first research teams in the area in 1893, and since then she has been frequently seen by the tallest building complex called El Castillo. No one exactly knows the story behind the Stone Lady considering the history of this site, but many believe she may have been a part of a ritual sacrifice, which was a tradition and spiritual practice done by the ancient Maya civilization. In our number 8 spot today, we have Berg Elts. This German castle dates back to 1157, so it's no surprise that there are many myths and legends surrounding it. The most common tale is that of a young countess named Agnes. Agnes was betrothed or promised to another noble, but after meeting him, she called off their future wedding. Apparently, this guy was the worst, and also, even if he wasn't, no one could really blame her for calling off a wedding she didn't 
want to have. But of course, things quickly went awry. This noble guy was mad that she had rejected him, so the scorned lover laid siege to the castle. Agnes fought to defend her home, but she passed away during the battle. That is the story behind why her spirit is said to haunt the Berg Elts castle. Many say the strongest presence is felt in her former bedroom. It is said that her spirit is quite mournful, and apparently her battle armor and axe remain on display as well. In our number 7 spot today, we have the Eden Brown Estate. This estate is located in Nevis, which is the smaller of the two islands that comprise the nation of St. Kitts and Nevis in the Caribbean. It is said that despite having just as much to offer, Nevis is often overshadowed by St. Kitts. That is, until people hear of this ghostly haunting. Eden Brown Estate is a former plantation that now lies in ruin. The estate was once owned by a businessman who was going to give the property to his daughter as a wedding present. Legend goes that on the wedding day there was a very mysterious duel between the groom and his best man that ended up leaving both of the men dead. Because of this tragic happening on what should have been her wedding day, the businessman's daughter remained unmarried and alone for the rest of her life, which meant that when she passed, there was no one to leave the estate to. Now visitors of the estate report seeing the spirit of a reclusive woman as she roams about the grounds. Aside from this story, who knows what other kind of horrors and absolute tragedies that this place has seen. In our number 6 spot today, we have Bangar Fort. Bangar Fort is located in India, just 100 miles southwest of Delhi. This place is pretty much completely abandoned, as it is said to have had a curse placed on it. Apparently, many, many years ago, a sorcerer tried to woo a local princess, in which she rejected him. He got so upset that he decided that cursing this town was his only course of action. I just have to mention that none of these are a normal reaction to being rejected, and calling it an overreaction would honestly be an Understatement. This fort now is closed to visitors after sundown because of all the spooky happenings that go on here. This fort is extremely beautiful, so it's no wonder the paranormal doesn't keep people out. People have reported having extremely strong feelings of an otherworldly presence, and even some have reported hearing voices that are seemingly coming from nowhere. In our number five spot today, we have the Whaley House. The Whaley House is located in San Diego and it was built in 1857. The site that this family house was built on was actually the location of San Diego's first public gallows, so as you can imagine, that's a pretty good backstory for a haunted site. Right after moving in, Thomas Whaley reported that he could hear the footsteps of Yankee Jim Robinson, who had been hanged at the gallows just four short years before the house was built. After moving in, the Whaley family began to experience a bunch of family tragedies, many of which actually happened inside of the house. The Whaley house is now a museum, and apparently the family members continue to haunt the site. These paranormal occurrences are apparently often accompanied by the smells of cigar smoke and heavy perfumes. In our number 4 spot today, we have Obvodny Canal. Obvodny Canal is located in St. Petersburg, Russia, and this whole thing just really creeps me out. This man-made canal was built in the late 18th century, and ever since then, there has been extremely strange occurrences at this location. Construction workers would complain of headaches, they would also sometimes even have random outbursts of violent behavior that was characteristic of them, but the craziest, most unsettling part is what has given this location full cursed status. Many of these people have attempted to take their own lives. Sadly, most of the attempts were successful, but the few people who have been saved have explained that they have no idea why they did it. They say that they didn't really have intentions beforehand, and some have even said that they felt some sort of invisible force pulling them into the water. Apparently there are some sinister souls that live beneath the surface of the water, and there have even been reports of seeing a lady in white in the water before she suddenly disappears. Long story short, remind me to just never ever go here. In our number 3 spot today, we have the Eastern State Penitentiary. The Eastern State Penitentiary is located in Philadelphia, and of course it used to be a prison, but it is now an abandoned and extremely haunted house. This prison used to house some pretty big profile prisoners such as Al Capone and Willie Sutton, but it was different from the American prisons we are used to now. This is because this prison was entirely separate incarceration. The inmates would live, sleep, eat, and everything else alone. When they were removed from their cells, 
themselves, they would have hoods placed over their heads as well. Considering all we now know about how detrimental isolation is, this of course must have taken an immense toll on the prisoners. Beside this, there were also some pretty gruesome and horrible punishments in this prison, such as having prisoners' tongues chained to their wrists. I'm honestly not even sure how you would do that, but apparently it was a thing. This prison now sees thousands of voluntary visitors every year, and there have been plenty of reports of some creepy paranormal happenings. These reports include seeing shadowy figures, hearing creepy laughter that doesn't belong to anyone living, and hearing footsteps throughout the prison. I feel like considering all that went on when this prison was active, it truly does make sense that this building would be a haunted one. In our number 2 spot today we have Raynham Hall. Raynham Hall is located in England and was built around 1620 and it is a large building on 7,000 acres, which is obviously quite impressive. The tale that follows this haunted building is that of Lady Dorothy Dolly Townsend and her husband Viscount Turnip Townsend. I can't believe a couple with the nicknames Dolly and Turnip have an evil history, but unfortunately, they do. The story goes that Turnip kept Dolly locked up in the house, which is obviously just terrible and very cruel. After her passing, it's no wonder she decided to stick around and haunt the house. Apparently, there was a photo taken of her ghost in 1930, and it is said that no one has ever been able to prove it was a fake. So, all you photo experts out there, take a look and let me know what you think. A lot of the places on this list now serve as haunted houses, but apparently this one is still lived in by the Raynham family. Hence the name. In our number one spot today, we have Forsyth Park. One thing I didn't know is that apparently the entire city of Savannah, Georgia is a pretty haunted place due to the creepy tunnels that are located underneath the city. But one of the most notable, highly haunted places within the city is Forsyth Park. Apparently, there used to be a hospital across the street, and there would be autopsies performed in the tunnels below the park. I personally feel like autopsies are already creepy enough, so I'm not sure if conducting them in an underground tunnel was exceptionally necessary, but hey, I can't change the past. Because of this scary practice, the park has seen a lot of paranormal activity since these days, and it usually is the sort of place where one second you'll see a strange figure, but as soon as you blink or look away, it disappears just as quickly as it suddenly appeared. Mm -hmm. 